Cindy and I, thank you so much for being here and for uh, speaking with me. I'm going to be honest with you. My role here is to be a little bit skeptical. I know what we've done. I've kind of understood that a little bit, but you kind of have to convince me a little bit. Why don't we start, just introduce yourselves. Um, So I'm Jeff Hirsch. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for IG Healthcare. Uh, Cindy, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Cindy Owen. I'm the Clinical Insights uh, Director for Point of Care Ultrasound. Okay. And Nachi Halman. I'm the Chief Engineer for Point of Care Ultrasound. So we've done some interesting things, but I'm just going to say, you know, you're going to have to prove it to me. So specifically, first, give me a little bit of a, a background. We've developed some new automated tools for venue. Um, just give me a little bit of an oversight. How are they going to help clinicians evaluate their patients, specifically their patients who they suspect may be in shock? Yeah, so we have three automated tools, and um, the reason we're, we're doing these is because patients in shock need medical care that, and answers quickly. Uh, if, you know, for example, there's over a million uh, cases a year just of septic shock in the U.S., and a quarter of those patients are going to die. They need care that's fast and accurate. And the clinician has many things on their mind. If we can uh, help through automation um, to uh, make tools that are simpler, faster, less complex for them to get those answers fast and treat their patients accurately, that's a win-win. So septic shock is the most common shock, but is this going to be useful for hemorrhagic shock and some of the other types of shock? Oh, absolutely. All, all four main classifications of shock um, can be uh, helped by these tools. Yeah, so uh, we've actually developed uh, several type of tools based on uh, what physicians have told us uh, would be uh, very valuable, and these tools uh, uh, look at the organs uh, that are m- most commonly used uh, by ultrasound scanning for a diagnosis of shock, which is the heart, the IVC, and the lung. Okay, and and there's some automation here. So you want to just speak to what that automation is, because obviously we can do these ultrasounds. Physicians can do this on their own, but the new tools here are automated and I, I think intended to make it a little easier for them, correct? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for example, one of the tools, um, looks at the IVC. The IVC is very important in assessment of shock because we need to know what the volume status is of the patient. So we have an auto IVC tool that's going to make that less complex for the physician. Once they're scanning the IVC, uh, this tool will automatically trace the borders and uh, calculate uh, the collapsibility index within one breathing cycle. And uh, this is going to save them time and complexity. Okay, any other tools? Yeah, we've, uh, for the lung, we've actually uh, developed a tool that uh, allows the physician uh, to see B-lines better. It actually highlights B-lines uh, uh, in real time while scanning, uh, and it will also jump to the best frame, the frame that indicates the most severe case of B-lines. So it could be, uh, for example, caused by uh, pulmonary edema uh, with cardiogenic shock. Uh, we've also created a tool for the lung that will allow the physician to uh, collect lung images systematically following an anatomical diagram so they don't miss uh, lung zones and then review the entire lung condition uh, over an anatomical uh, layout. Are the tools limited to just these ones that look at volume or do they also, is there a tool that will help me know how well the heart is functioning? Yeah, so there's a third tool. And, of course, it's very important to evaluate the heart and cardiogenic shock. And not only that, a key component of resuscitation is to improve the stroke volume. Uh, So for that, we've developed a tool, the auto VTI tool. And what this tool does is it will place uh, an ROI in the region of the LVOT automatically. And within a a few heartbeats, it's going to actually uh, fish for the best uh, Doppler signal within the LVOT area and automatically trace and give you the VTI. All right, so let's say I'm a believer and, I, you know, okay, I can see how an automated tool would help me. Mm-hmm. I'll be able to do it a little faster, I would think, a little more efficiently. But how do I know that the tools work well? I mean, how did you validate them? How do, how do I know how good they are? Yeah, we, to validate these tools, we looked at the population of uh, patients uh, undergoing dialysis. And uh, the reason we choose uh, that population base is because they, uh, they present... Uh, large variability of uh, fluid uh, states uh, 
uh, including uh, various states of uh, pulmonary edema, extravascular lung water, as well as variability in cardiac output. And we looked at these patients uh, before dialysis, after dialysis, in between. So really uh, showing a large variety of these clinical condition. So, so before dialysis, I assume, is when they're going to be a little more fluid overloaded, and after dialysis, they'll be fluid either normal or usually a little fluid underloaded, because that's the intention. And that's why you chose those patients. Exactly. So, so we thought it was a great uh, patient population for, for this validation. Uh, the actual validation uh, was carried out by comparing the automated uh, algorithm results or tool results uh, to that by uh, one of the world's best expert in ultrasound in emergency medicine. So that was the actual validation process. Okay, so you basically you chose one of the experts in the field. That's what you used as the gold standard. You evaluate a couple of patients or, I mean, how much value? I mean, I, I want to yeah. get a feel because yeah. I, I want to be convinced that I should be able to trust this. How many patients did you look at? Yeah, so for this validation, we've used over over 100 patients. Uh, uh, and uh, and those patients, were some of them were scanned several times before and after and in between dialysis se sessions. Okay. And so that's how you built the tool. Mm -hmm. That's how you validated it. The gold standard was one of the leading uh, point-of-care ultrasound people in the world. So, so I, I, I can see how this will have some benefit, and I can see how having dependable results, having more efficient results will be better. But before my colleagues and I start to adopt something like this, we have to be comfortable with it, and we actually also have to have some confidence in it. So have you done anything to address those issues? Yeah, absolutely. We thought about that a lot. And uh, what we decided to do is um, right on the screen where the user's looking, uh, we have a quality indicator. And when they're getting a good image, that quality in indicator is green, indicating they have a good image. It's, it's real time, it's green? In real time, it's green. So say, for example, if they don't have a good image, if they're moving the probe or there's a lot of noise or something like that, the quality indicator is going to change to a yellow cautionary or a red, uh, you shouldn't use this. Yeah, in, in a way, the quality indicator uh, shows to you either what the system thinks about whether the result that it's presenting are going to match that of, an, of the expert physician. So when it's green, it means that the software is pretty confident that the result would match the expert physician. Wow. Okay, so you've given me real-time feedback mm -hmm. so I can have more confidence that I'm obtaining mm -hmm. good quality images. And then you've done the second part of it, which is you've helped me read those images and interpret them in a reproducible way that you've validated, that you've looked at. Those are the two things that always concern me. Am I getting good images and then am I reading the images correctly? And it sounds like you've thought of both of those things.